Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Today, I'm gonna to be breaking in a brand new journal. I have a Strathmore, um, <clears throat> what size did it say? Five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Um, so it's only a smallish journal. I like working in this size kind of journal, the small Dilutions journal and also the small Strathmore ones. It is brand new, as you can see, because it's still got the slip on it. I've actually had this one for probably about six months in readiness, um, but just never got around to actually starting it. But I thought I would start it today, brand new journal, and I'm also going to um, start with my random 52 cards. So I'm gonna take them all out of the pack. Ooh. That's all 52. Give them a good shuffle. And then just pull one card out at random. So I'm gonna go, actually there's one, it looks like it's upside down. So which one's that one? fractured and the colour slate so we've got some nice kind of um, tealy greens or turquoisey blues going into greys and maybe a touch of purple in the corner so we've got slate which is a kind of purpley grey anyway and we've also got the word fractured okay so that's the one I'm going to be doing today so let's just pop all the other cards back into the box. Open up my brand new journal to the first page. I'm just going to do this one page today. Okay, so what I need to do now is to go and gather a few bits and pieces. So I'm going to get some black paint, some tealy colored paint, some purpley paint, um, some gray, and I'll see what I'm going to do. I'll have a little think about what I'm going to do for the fractured bit. And then, uh, and then I'll be back once I've gathered my resources. Okay, so I've hunted through um, my resources and supplies and I've decided on a very, very few supplies actually. So I'm going to put some clear gesso down on the page first. I've pulled out of my Dina Wakely paint collection. I've got Peacock turquoise I've also got the eggplant which a touch of purple which isn't my favorite color but I still use it uh, I've got the gray elephant and I've also got black and white for adding shade and tone um, I've also got um, a stencil here called shattered glass um, not sure um, this was a prototype stencil um, that I designed a while ago and I was never sure about it. Um, let me just, there we go, that's better. I wasn't really sure about it, um, but since I've got the prototype, I'm going to use it. Um, if this stencil is something, or this design is interesting to you, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I might reconsider doing this as um, one of my releases. So, shattered glass stencil, that's what this one was called. Um, I've also printed off a photograph of me. Now, I always think that using photographs of yourself in art journal pages can sometimes come across as being a little egotistical, but it's a personal pursuit. So art journaling is a personal thing. So including photographs of yourself in whatever way, um, obviously is okay because it's about you, it's how you're feeling, it's, it's a way of expressing yourself. So using photographs of yourself in your art journal pages is fine. Um, I don't do it very often, like I said, but I'm going to do it today because that's just the way I'm feeling. So I've printed one off on some paper. Uh, it's actually on my um, self-adhesive sticker paper that I have, I'm gonna use. And I think I'm ready to get going. So first thing I'm going to do is to put some of that clear gesso down on the page, if I can get the lid off. Oh, good grief. Oh, ouch. 
there we are. I've obviously screwed that on a little bit too tight for my own good there. And having arthritis doesn't really help. But hey ho. Right, okay. So clear gesso all over the page. Um, I've already packed my polypropylene um, page protector sheet, so I'm having to use some kitchen roll. That's what this is. Um, normally I have a, a sheet of um, polypropylene. It's uh, one of those kitchen um, cutting mat things um, that I put between the pages just as a page protector for the ones behind. But like I said, I've packed them all already in readiness for moving, so can't get to them. So I'm having to use kitchen roll. Never mind. We all have our crosses to bear, and mine's only a minor one. Make, do and mend. Okay, so, gesso down, get that dry, shouldn't take too long, and I'll be back, in the words of Arnie. I'll be back. Hasta la vista. No, mother. My page is all completely dry now, so what I want to do is just to add in some colour into the background, create a kind of ground. So I'm going to just add in a little bit of that purple, just around the page, in the background. Oop, lids alive. And some of the elephant, some of the grey, and I'm going to put that in the similar sort of positions around the page to the purple. And I have a, it's not a dry brush, but it's not a wet brush either. It's kind of a brush that's been a little bit wet, but not too much. And I'm just going to rush down the page. And can you see how that gray elephant paint is kind of mixed in with that? And if I want a little bit more, more blobs where I think the purple is a little bit too dark and then just feed that in a little bit more I'm going to start taking that across the page. Down and across. Just to kind of break it up a little bit. And I'm just going to keep on adding it until I'm happy with the way that it's appearing. At the minute, there's too much purple. I don't want to add in any white. Now a lot of this is actually going to be covered up, but that doesn't matter. That's more like it. It's very windy here today, I can hear the wind rattling around the side of the house. Okay, that'll do for now for my basic background. There we go. So I'm going to get that dried. And then I'll be back. Okay, so that is now dry. There's a little bit of shine where it's still just a tad tacky, but that could just be because it's warm. So let's just give it an extra blast. So while that's cooling, um, let me just kind of explain what my thought process is here. Now, obviously, up until pulling that card out, I had no kind of real idea um, what I was going to be doing. So I'm kind of winging it. Um, so, yeah. So I've not really got a tried and tested idea in my head as to exactly what it is that I want to achieve, but I know what colours I need to use kind of thing. So um, let's try and build up this background a little bit now by using this stencil. So start using the darker colour first of all. 
So this is the Peacock, Dina Wakeley Peacock. I've just got my little palette. And I know that the slate is more of a grey colour, so I will be introducing more grey into it later on. Let's just build up. I'll get my um, sponge. This is just an artist sponge. So let's just get that. Not even sure how I want to get a quote down onto the page for this one. Not sure as yet. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that down into the middle. It's quite a nice colour combo actually. The peacock and the purple, even though I'm not a huge fan. Need a little bit more paint. I should then put the top stripe back on. There we go. There we go. Okay, so again, lots of drying time needed. So I'll get that done. And then I'll be back. Okay, so on my paint palette here, I've mixed up some black, some of the elephant, and a touch of that eggplant to try and match up that slate grey colour. Now, obviously, this is um, not dry yet, so it might just need a little bit more white in there just to kind of lighten it up a little bit for what I want to do off of the colour that I'm trying to match up. So let's just add some more white in and see whether or not we're there. So there was the black, the elephant, some white and just a hint of that eggplant just to get that kind of slate colour going. I think we're actually there. Nearly. I think the camera's picking it up slightly different, but it's from my eyes anyway, it's almost there. Which is good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back the stencils, to turn the pattern around, use the same sponge, and this time just add in some of those over the top. Now these paints, obviously, are um, opaque so theoretically they should um, cover the colour underneath that's the thought anyway so we've got a nice kind of broken pattern I think that's okay. That'll do me. Put that stencil to one side and again let's get it all dried off. That background is now, um, it's dry but it's still quite hot. Obviously with the amount of paint that's on there now, um, with it being acrylic it's actually holding the heat quite well but it's now time to deal with this picture here. So I'm just going to move the journal to one side. Um, grab that kitchen roll. I'm going to add a colour wash over the top of this using um, that slate colour. So I need a fair bit of water because I want it to be quite a thin wash and I'm just going to go over the top. Of course, it's going to curl. But 
that'll be fine. And again, I'll just quickly drive it off. Shouldn't take long. Okay, that didn't take long at all. And then I'm going to tear it right down the middle, seeing as we're using the word fractured. Bring the page back in and then I can tear the back off. There should be a couple of, that's it, there's a nice little division there. I can stick that just up to the edge. Hello Mr. Bentaboos. Because it's really, really windy today, didn't want to go out for his WLK, WALK this morning. I think he might just be getting a bit hungry, I need to, need to go for a, a wee wee, so I'll just stick this down, I'll go see what he wants. And then line that bottom part up. Just let that sit there for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so my two shattered halves or fractured halves are there now. So I want to add in some lighter tones. Um, so I want some, I've got some bubble wrap. Yes, here we go. Just a small piece of the old Michael Bublé wrap. We'll do nicely, thank you very much. And I'm gonna bring in some white now. So just a little bit of white. And I'm gonna do this fairly lightly. Uh, right. Clean brush. all over the bubble wrap and then I can just add just kind of bring the background into the foreground a little bit I've not got a lot of room to play with on this so I've been just light. Okay, obviously between layers we need to dry. The bubble wrap's now dry so I've still got one big polypropylene um, sheet that I can use. So I now want to bring in some of that um, lighter blue, the turquoise colour. So I'm just going to grab some of that turquoise and then just using the edge of an old bank card an ATM card. I'm going to introduce in some lighter shades. It is kind of a dark page this one but you know it's a random thing isn't it? It's just one of those things that, I was, that I've pulled out of the pack so we do what we're told when we're doing agree to do a random thing. Cross. So I'm breaking the pattern up with other colours because obviously the prompt is fractured so it's okay to bring in 
into divisions and lines that kind of help to give that the look and feel I don't want to go across that side of my face there so I'm just going to lightly touch so not every art journal page is sunshine butterflies and flowers because we're not all sunshine butterflies and flowers are we? Not all the time anyway. We all have our broken moments where we just want to shut the world away, scream at the void, shake our fists up at the sky. We all go through that so it's okay to reflect that in the pages now and again. Okay so let me get that dry. Okay, I'm now going to take a little bit of the elephant paint, which is the grey, and again I've got a little brush. And I'm just going to wipe some paint onto the brush because I just want to add in just a couple of areas of dry brushing just to kind of tone. Because don't forget the main colour of this is the slate, not the purple. So it's okay to tone down some of that colour if it's not really what I intended. Now the intention was not to have that purple showing through as much, but it is what it is. It's a very very strong colour and it's a very difficult colour to use I think unless you're going for real big and bold but it's one of the reasons why I don't like using it but hey ho now I might just now bring in some white and just do the same thing again the white worked a little bit better. That's kind of toned that down a bit more. Okay, let's get me dried off. Okay, so before I um, jump in and just to add my finishing touch to the art journal page, I just want to show you the card. So if you look at the colours that are in the background, we've got that grey, we've got that kind of greeny blue just there. I've tried as best as I can to kind of balance those colours and put those in there. Uh, obviously we've got the grey slate so we've got that grey showing through in the background and also down the sides as well and obviously with the black showing through of the photo it's kind of giving you a nice bit of balance there. Um, I'm hoping that I've managed to translate the colours onto the page as best as I possibly can with the resources I've got. Obviously nobody's got the exact same colours. So I'm happy with the way that kind of has turned out. So just to finish off, I'm going to grab my food ball pen and I'm actually going to write in the gap.
Okay, so now I've actually got um, some of the letters in. I can space out. The remaining. And then I can go back in and thicken up those letters where I want to. Don't always get this right, but it doesn't really matter. Don't think anybody's keeping count or score. I'm not a calligrapher at the best of times. So the food bowl takes a little while to dry. So let's give it a bit of help. And then I'm going to finish off. Hopefully this pen will work. Just with hot. Probably put these in the wrong place, but I don't really care. I'm calling that page done. So I've just put the pen away and I haven't signed and dated. So there we go. So I shall sign that at the bottom. And today is the 9th. 9 to 19. And that is the first from my randoms. Random 52 deck which the digi download for all 52 cards plus the box is available on my website now da, 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 da. Um, so it's there for you to print out obviously there is also a back so you can print a um, common back on each one um, I am looking into the possibility of having these printed professionally but um, <clears throat> the quote that I've had come back was a little on the high side but I have to work out which way to do it if I can do it if I can afford to do it to keep it cost effective to have them printed professionally but in the meantime the digi download for all of these cards is on the website now so that's it hope you've enjoyed watching me wrestle with that color scheme uh, if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up share the video with your friends and as i said at the beginning don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so that you get notifications of all my uploads throughout the week that's all from me for now i will see you all again very very soon bye for now
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.